Divine direction is the ways of God revealed to men. Divine direction is the ways of God revealed to men. God does not want to give you gifts. God wants to give you himself. God wants to give you himself. And do you know the funny thing about life is men are on an endless quest to find the way. To find there's a missing link in the life of men. That is why the man is a being that always desires to worship. That's why you see the Indians, they worship anything. They have the highest number of vegetarians because they consider most animals as gods. You can't kill your god and eat it. Your god is a cow. You must be asking for your death to eat your God. Your God is a goat. How dare you kill your God and say you need goat meat pepper soup. So you want to garnish your God and eat it. And that is why they abstain from so many things. They are no more holy in terms of avoiding things in terms of observing sacred things. They avoid almost everything. The snake is sacred. The cockroach is sacred. Everything is sacred for many of them. And that is why they don't touch them. Neither do they kill them. But uh, the funny thing with all this, their endless quest for divine direction. Everyone is seeking divine direction. Divine direction. Neither have they come to understand that when you seek divine direction, you are actually seeking God. When you want to, when you pray, Father, I need direction. I need the way to go. I need what to do next. What is it about me? How do I pursue this marriage thing? How do I go about my business? How do I go about my life? How do I go about ministry? All you are asking for is God. Because do you know what is happening? It simply means you have eyes but you can't see are you following me because everything about you has been written down before you were born do you understand me everything about you everything that an iphone can do is written in the manual there is nothing outside the manual that the iphone can do do you understand me my car, when it came, it came with a manual. At a point, some things started happening. We quickly went to the manual to check. What is this? What is this? We saw some signs on the dashboard. We said, okay, let's check. We brought the manual. We started checking. Okay, we discovered. Okay, this is the course. So we didn't go to mechanic and start trying this and trying that and trying this and trying that. We checked the manual. It was easy to decipher without the help of a professional mechanic, in quote. Are you following me? There is nothing my car can do. There is no place in the manual written that the car, this car can fly. There is nowhere. There is nowhere written in that manual that this car, that there, there is a speed you will be on if you can reach 180. At a point, it will start accelerating and now starts moving into the air. There is no way. So when you ask for direct divine direction, all 
you are praying for, but you have not come to understand, is that you are praying for God. Why? God is light. God is bigger than light. But the Bible had to describe God as light because you have an understanding about what light can do in darkness. Is someone hearing me? You have an understanding. Bible said the kingdom of God, Jesus was teaching them. He said the kingdom of God is like a farmer. Who went to, is the kingdom of God like a farmer? No. But he's trying to use something they can relate. So when they see the way, the seed is cast to the ground. And after a time, it germinates and starts growing and starts bringing forth fruit. He uses it to explain to them. He said the kingdom of God is like a certain rich man who was traveling to a far country and gave his servant talent. So some of them can be able to relate. Okay, so that means I am here. I am living my life, but I'm actually on an assignment. They can be able to relate. Everything you want to discover is in God. When you pray for divine direction, you are actually praying and asking for God. John 14 verse 6. And Jesus said unto him, you know, at this point, some of the disciples and came and asked Jesus, they said, Lord, we have been with you for this long. He said, show us the way. Somebody said, show us the way. Give us update. They came to Jesus and they said, Master Abba, we have been following you. You have been doing things. You have been running things. We will just stay here. Give us update. He said, show us the way. Show us the way. Just like some people are praying, Lord, divine direction. Lord, show me what to do. Lord, I need your direction. Lord, which way do I go? Who is my husband? Is he God's will or God's power or God's power or God's or God John the Baptist? Or who is who among them? Lord, look at their three pictures. Show me, show me, show me. Show me. Lord, who should be my wife? I like Tina, she's slim, but I like them. Um, Amanda is but Amanda is not in choir. I need somebody in choir. But oh, my mom is like she's taking oh, Lord, show me the way. Show me the way. The disciples came to Jesus and they said, Show us the way. Show us the way. <laughs> you were looking for one spectacular thing. You were looking for one powerful thing. One dangerous, powerful thing. But Jesus turned and looked at them and said, I am the way. I am divine direction. You can't be lost in me. If God is the only thing you are holding, you are holding everything. He that is with God is majority. It's majority. It's majority. He said, the moment you are in me and I am in you, you are in the way leading to life. Some of you don't know, there are some boys in this town that are gallivanting. All of them, they know us. Gospel. Some of those boys that you are trying to bring to church and they will not come. They will not come. You, we are orchestrated to come. So that when you are manifested, then all of them will gather. There is a gathering time. But now, Bible says, Jesus called the twelve. Most of you here today now are the twelve that Jesus has called in this place. Because he said, no man come to me except I draw him. There is a time it will reach who he will just draw the five thousand. He said, the Lord will his and his people will gather. Who will not need to do much advert. They will just gather. The time is coming. But he said he called the twelve to be with him. To be with him. And they were with him for this long. And yet, they were still looking for the way. They are looking for a big thing. The big thing is God. <laughs> the big thing you are looking for is God. 
looking elsewhere. There is nothing big happening anywhere. The big thing that is happening is happening within you. To the degree you harness, to the degree you can see what he is showing you, that degree you manifest. Jesus said unto him, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. He said, no man commit unto the Father, but by me. But by me. It's Jesus, the Lord of your life. You cannot find yourself outside him. You cannot. Anything you discover will destroy you. And the Bible said, Jesus speaking to Peter, he said, follow me and I will make you. Divine direction is following Jesus. You want me to give you bullets and 12 ways to find divine direction? Is that what you are looking for? Jesus said, Peter, you are a fisherman. Just like some of you are here now seated. Life is battered and tattered. You don't even know which day. You don't even know what you're doing. You don't even understand. That this school you are going. There are so many people that have gone out. And they are driving keke and driving taxi everywhere. Some of them, the moment they are finishing, they carry POS. That's the in thing now. I know first class materials that are driving keke now. Driving keke. Your president told you that there is no job anywhere. Everywhere is filled. Everywhere is filled. <laughs> I know PhD holders that are living in one room apartment. I'm not saying I know PhD holders that are living in one room apartment. You know. The race is not for the swift. The race is not for the swift. Great. Neither favor to men of skill. The race is not for the swift. Neither favor to men of skill. It is the Lord that lifts a man. He said, I am the way. Jesus looked at Peter. He said, you are a fisherman. You are a fisherman. Tell me one fisherman you know his name. Tell me. Did you eat fish last week? I don't want to say his name. If you ate fish last week, let me see. Okay, some people are trying to remember the last time they ate fish. Because Saba, no good. Sabbath no go allow you eat fish. Buy one fish, 500, and you use that eat for three days. <laughs> but tell me one fisherman, you know his name. Yet, we are seeing fishes everywhere. Every day. The people that can afford it are eating it on a daily basis. But you have never you have never been interested in to ask who fished this fish. Is it how they say it? Is it fetch fish or fish fish? Eh? Who fish the fish? Okay, who? God. <laughs> Peter would have lived as a powerful fisherman and he's gone and nobody would have known him. But Jesus said, divine direction he said, it's okay, we are doing well in your business. Did you recognize that Jesus never said anything about his business? He didn't, he didn't make mention of it. At a point, he told him, hey, hey go, and, go and get a hook, go and get a hook, get to the river. Fetch us one fish on the mouth, you see money, bring it, sharp, sharp. He didn't tell Matthew. He didn't tell any of the other disciples. So your skill is not a waste. God 
God is not using nobodies. Look at all the people he called. All of them were busy. So you don't sit down and you're looking for divine direction. You'll be on the run. When Elijah met Elisha, she, he was doing his business. Was doing his business. He came there and hit him mantle and left. You don't sit down and you're looking for divine direction. You must be on the move. Somebody say on the move. You must be on the move. Jesus never he met Matthew. Where he was collecting tax. He said, follow me. Say, look, was a doctor. Say, follow me. Every one of them we are engaged. We're engaged. But now you see people lazy about they just come to church from Monday to Sunday, Monday to Sunday, Monday to Sunday. They are praying, God. Eh, and all their prayers is so that somebody somewhere will call their number and dash the money. That's what is divine direction for them. He said, Peter, follow me. And I'll make you. And I'll make you. There is something you become in following God. And that is something that will last for eternity. <laughs> there are so many people that have worked in companies. When they were working, they were very relevant. Ah, you not hear me. So, but there is something you can become that doesn't expire doesn't expire in time doesn't expire in time when we get to heaven we will ask to see Peter ah, we heard your works ah, we heard how you 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 gave your you said you want to die upside down because you don't want to be equated to your mouth you don't want to die the same way Jesus died we want to see Paul we want to see Paul we are not seeing him because of his degree he had degree, had MSc, had bachelors, had masters, had sisters, had uncles, had brothers. Every kind of degree, Paul got it. He was a professor of law. The professor of law. But we are not going to look for him because of his degree. We are going to look for him because he followed God. He followed God even to the detriment of his own life. He said, everywhere. That's divine direction. you are not living for yourself. You are finding money for the assignment God has given you. Not because you want to build a house. But will you build house? houses? You are finding money not because of you want to eat. The moment you start living for others, that is when, that is when you began to live. That's the time your life began. But no, no, you are okay this one is paying more that one is paying more this one is paying more every run around and travel you ever done or you do is just to put money in your pocket but not be that some of you you finish school you just throw that certificate at the corner and follow God say where are you leading me Lord anywhere you lead I'll follow he said I am the way he said, the way to the Father is me. You want to know the truth about your life? He said, follow me. You want to have life? He said, follow me. You want to give your life a meaning? He said, follow me. Whatever it is you want to achieve in this life, he said, follow me. Follow me. Follow me. I give you assurance and my assurance does not fail. Assurance is not temporal. My assurance is assurance. Someone hearing me? Is someone hearing me? I want to ask you a question. Can you stay with God? Can you stay with God? Can you stay with God when He is quiet? There are two, three people. My spirit just went to where they are. They are supposed to be here now. But they are not here. Can you stay with God when he is quiet? 
and realize that he is not quiet because he hates you. And the Bible said, and the, 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 the sheep, the, there was so much turmoil and the turbulence on the sea. And Jesus was sleeping. Jesus was sleeping. He was not sitting down you know, and just looking at them. He was sleeping. He was sleeping. He was sleeping. Uh -uh. Everything in the ship was falling apart. Everything in the ship was falling apart. Jesus came out. I mean, what is it? Peter. He came and said, What is wrong with you? Carest thou not that we perish? Is it not touching you that we are perishing? But you are sleeping. <laughs> Have you ever felt like God is sleeping on your prayers? You pray and pray and pray and pray. But no answer is coming forth. You call God. He said, Lord, please, let my auntie not die. Please, please, Father, please. And she died. And after dying, you still prayed some more, prayed some more, prayed some more. And she didn't wake up. And she was buried. Can you stay with God when he's quiet? When he's quiet. Can you stay with God? He said, follow me. I will make you. Follow me. I will make you. It doesn't matter what is happening. Just follow me. I told you, I said, the way to follow God is to trust him. Not to understand him. He said, because his ways are past finding out. His ways are past finding out. You can't use your finite brain to understand an infinite God. You can't. You see, what you call death is not death. Baba is here, seeing all of us. Just say, uh, come over. I have seen your pain, and I know that rest is better for you. Come over. What, why you are crying? The other person is 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 at home, is resting, and say, ah, please stop crying. There's no need. I'm at a, I'm in a better place. Stop crying. Can you stay with God? God, please help me through this exam. Lord, if you can just deliver me from this extra, I'm even fighting to pay my fees and now an extra year. Lord, please, no, please, no, please, no, please, no, please, no. And you have it. And have it very well. Have it very well. You enter any office, they'll kick you out. You say, go and repeat your extra year. That's a making. That's a making. <laughs> That's a making. The way God makes is different. Can you stay with God? Someone, can you stay with God? Little did they know that Jesus was trying to build their faith. When Jesus got up, he said, You never needed me for this matter. You never needed me. You didn't need me at all. He said, if, if you had the smallest kind of faith, you would have quenched this turbulence. But you see, you need to start quenching small, small turbulences in your life to build your faith to quench big turbulences. That's why sometimes when you pray, God keeps quiet. Lord, please, my school fees, my school fees. And you didn't get it. Nobody sends it. God wants you to start a business. You didn't hear me. God is trying to open your eyes to something that you're not seeing. That has always been around you. And he knows that it is in starting it will be your preservation for tomorrow. That you will not need that uncle. You will not need to call anybody. We get uncle. We get parents. We get mama. We get this. You will not need it. But is it going to be easy? It's not going to be easy. I don't.
don't want to, in this church, I don't want to feed you kindergarten. Receive it. In the, and receive it. Receive, and you are not receiving anything. That is what breeds frustration. After 10 years of receiving it, you didn't receive nothing. You have small headache, you call pastor. You have small, you, can, you, you need 10 naira, you call pastor. You need 200 naira. You, you, you trek from there to here. You are, you, are, you, are, you are feeling like you have done the world for God. What did you do for God? You didn't do anything. You just came to help your life. If you are a student of Unicard and you are living in uh, Guagualada or 8 miles, will the lecturers beg you to come for lecture? When you come, you, you, you keep your hands like this. You say, hey, people will see that I have arrived. Or oh, yeah, come and deliver the lecture by force. You can come. They say you came later and send you back. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? It's only in church that we know how to do hey, If you know what I have done and what I've been doing for God. <laughs> Didn't do nothing. They have been trying to better your life. Can you stay with God when he has answered you? You know some people, the reason why they left is because their prayers were answered. <laughs> Lord, I want to marry. Lord, I want to marry. Lord, I want to marry. The moment you're not married, they're not begging you to be in church. I love what Archbishop Benson Edahosa did. He said, a certain young man who was very hungry in church and after a long while and prayers, God remembered him. He started getting some contracts. He started getting some contracts. An engineer. And the moment you know it, you bought some cars. Before you knew it, ah, where are you there now? Oh, very busy, very busy. And stories had it, you carry girls, go here, go there. It was just, it was just gallivanting. Archbishop Benson did not talk to him. Until one day. So it's what somebody say, one day. Somebody say, one day. Don't wait for one day to learn. <laughs> Don't wait for one day to learn. God can make you lose everything to have you. That's why some people will never be rich in their life. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. I, I pray you hear me. Some people, confidence, some people will never be rich in their life because God knows that wealth will take you away. Take you away. Take you away. And God doesn't want anything to take you away. He doesn't. So he just he just keeps you a survivor. You just be there. Then God resists. You know, God is resisting some people. God resists. There are some certain things you will see. He says he searches the heart. The word of God pierces the heart. He knows the intent. Hey. Ask yourself now, is that why I'm broke now? I... God knows. He knows. It's not what you're saying. He knows. He knows. He knows. Can you stay with me? Can you stay? Stay. When there's one million, you stay. When there's zero kobo, zero balance, you stay. And there's 10 million, you stay. It now comes down to 200k. You still stay. The 200k is now finishing. 100 you still stay. 50k, you stay. Minus 100k, you stay. It now goes to 100 million. You still stay. It comes down to 1 million. You stay. It goes to 1 billion. You stay. You stay. Can you stay? Can you stay? He said he called the disciples to be with him. They know the go house. They yesterday I was pitying Solomon. That's them. Oh yeah, start going. Start going. They know they go home. Is when they finish crusade and finish crusade in the night. That's when the disciples they, they will now start asking Jesus, nah, Jesus, you said this one. He now starts breaking it down to them. By the time he finishes, he said, Bible says Jesus will constrain them. Let us move over to the other side. They will not enter ship. One time they enter ship, they didn't know Jesus have not come. They left. Jesus finished prayers after their meeting. The meeting was meeting after meeting. They finished crusade, now had meeting. He now sent them. They, they were now going. Him was stayed back to pray in the middle of the night. 
They now say, they say somebody called. Jesus is not here. That was meeting after meeting. Party after party. See how it's going. <laughs> he said, he called them to be with him. They just be with me. Can you stay? The man of God in Oka said, there is, God has everything. The only thing he doesn't have is time. Can you give him time? Yeah. Can you give him time? Can you give God time? The only thing he doesn't have is time. He lives in a timeless zone. Time is within him. So he doesn't have time. That's why God can say a thing. And all the prophets in the Old Testament, all of them died. They were prophesying it as if it was going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> Isaiah prophesied it. All of them were prophesying it. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders. Moses saw his days. Moses he said, lift up the brazen serpent. All of them, all of them, Abraham saw his days. All of them we are seeing symbols and signs of the coming of Jesus. But they never saw it. But they were, everyone, it was as if it was going to happen tomorrow. It happened thousands of years later. God, no day or time. You are, you are the one that is counting time for God. The Bible says, God called Abraham, say, follow me at 75. And I will make you the father of many nations. 25 years later, no, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. God is not working by your time. But if you can give him time, he will shorten time for you. You did not hear me. Can you stay when your prayers are answered? It's divine direction we are talking. <laughs> the only way to find out where you are going is to stay within light zone. There is no car that can travel further than his light. The moment you are going and you can't see wherever you are going, you, you reduce more. Maybe you look for another car that is coming that have light. You now start following the person. The moment the person enters their direction that is not your own, you are left stuck again. How shall I move? Or you bring out your phone light. <laughs> you know that's how some people are traveling. They are traveling in a car with their phone touch. They bring it out and they are trying to see where they are going. The world is a dark place. You can't travel without light. The world is a dark place. See, the, the, the gods of this world have blinded their eyes. The gods of this world. The god of this world is Satan. He said, the god of this world is busy blinding people's eyes. Blinding people. To, tonight will be it will be I will open your eyes and give you another eyes. And when you see what is not love, say no. This is this is not love. This is not it. This is red flag. The world is a dark place. You can't travel without light. And God is light. God is light. God is light. And you see, for you to travel in this dark world, understanding God, what will guide you is the fear of God. The fear of God. Now listen, we said when we began that divine direction is the ways of God revealed to men. Now, we say divine direction is enshrined in divine wisdom. But you see, you can't ask for divine wisdom without asking for the fear of God. Let me show you. Isaiah 11 verse 2. Somebody say the complete package. I want to give you the complete, the full package. Valentine's package. He said, and the spirit of the Lord 
The first spirit is the spirit of the Lord. Shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of understanding. The spirit of counsel. The spirit of might. The spirit of knowledge. And the spirit of the fear of the Lord. How can the Lord have the spirit of the fear of the Lord? You are not hearing me. You didn't hear me. There are different forms of wisdom. There are devilish wisdom. There are human wisdom. There are philosophical wisdom. How I know that your wisdom is the wisdom of God is the fear of God. Because when the spirit of the Lord rests upon him, it comes together with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Spirit of the fear of the Lord. When you think of his, the glory, Jesus, Bible said, Queen of Sheba entered into the house of Solomon and her spirit left her. She was dazed and amazed and confused and not because of what is happening, but the glory of the servants of Solomon. The glory of the servants of Solomon. Do you know why you should fear the Lord? Not because of the Lord. Look around you. Do you know that demons are servants of the Lord? Do you know? He said, the devil believes and trembles. And they are the servants of the Lord. He said, he is the Lord of hosts. He said, the her spirit left her because of the glory that is upon the servants. The servants, the people where they clean house, they arrange things, they set things in order, they welcome people, the protocol, they get everything. Alignment, everything, and her spirit left her, and she was confused. What's going on here? And you see, people, somebody will come here, hey, 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 we are in one 150 yard red cloth and white. And somebody is confused. Somebody will run to pastor. Pastor, pray for me. They're after my life. They're after my life. That one is not even a servant. That one is a wasted servant. That one is a wasted servant. A wasted servant. And you're afraid of it. He said, he's the head. I don't even want to go to the aspect where Papa preached. He is the head of all principalities and powers, rulers of darkness in high places. He is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. The spirit of wisdom that comes from God teaches you the fear of the Lord. Teaches you. The last time I told you, tell your neighbor, say, fear God. Anama one, no give. To watch in the Say it like that. Anybody that is not saying it, say, Anama one, no give. Who are you telling now? Fear the Lord, fear the Lord, fear the Lord, fear the Lord. <laughs> it is the fear of the Lord that will guide you, that will guide you. Joseph, I have a dream. I will be a wealthy man in this one and that one and that one and that one. And fornication brought to you to be the chairman in the house of Potiphar. Hey. Just say, lie with me, and you'll be in charge. Do you see the devil? Do you see the devil? He was in charge. The wife now wants her to be in charge. In charge of what? In charge. Of. 
There is a glory that awaits you. That is only the fear of God will bring you there. You are in charge. Satan tells you if you sleep with me, you will be in charge. In charge of what? He is aiming the glory of the visions of God in your heart. But you sell out because you don't have the fear of God. And you lose direction. Can you imagine Joseph in the house of Potiphar? After many years. And the brothers come to buy food. Even Joseph making that mistake. Egypt will be in famine. I wanted to say that, okay, and Egypt saved whatever they saved. And he was still a servant. And the brothers come. And they now go to buy food. And maybe from afar, he will see his brother. He say, hey, brother. Hey, brother. See me, oh. I'm God, thank God, oh. Ah. In the house of Potiphar, he's one of the augusts in this land. I'm, I'm a chairman there. I'm a chairman. Okay, okay maybe. They will now invite them. They will give them food. Say, now I'm going to hold this one, whole body. I'm going to use this one, whole body. That's if God saved Egypt through another means. He saved the world through another means. But could you imagine what selling out would have done to the whole world because of one man that lost the fear of God? He said, how can I do this great wickedness? against God and against my yoga. How can I? Don't sell out. Don't sell out. When the enemy tempts you, don't sell out. To be in charge. To be in charge of what you are in charge over. Imagine Satan. The same thing. Came to Jesus. Came to his Lord. He knows this person. is his Lord. But he looks at Jesus and tells him, he says, I will give you all these things. If you bow down, hey, his boldness. So who are you? Who are you? You need the fear of God to guide you. To guide you. That is why God knows the spirit of wisdom can bring you to prominence. He said, by me, kings rule. Kings reign. He said, by wisdom, a man built his house. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, and knowledge can bring you anything in this life. But you need the fear of the Lord to stay guided on the path in the divine direction. You need the fear of the Lord. Is someone hearing me? Are you hearing me? Don't sell out. Don't sell out. don't know if I have time to give you more. Do you want more? <laughs> if, you, if you want more, say aye. If you don't want, say nay. The nays have it. <laughs> Praise God. In our times, you know, many Christians think that the grace of God has, you know, replaced the fear of God. And that is why you see many people are destroying themselves by them. Utter destruction. Those days, when my father used to pray, he would say, Lord, any self-imposed causes. <laughs> and you come to discover that some people actually imposed causes on themselves. Self-imposed causes. I'll give you this one now. Many has defiled the Holy One of the church by touching sacred things. Sacred things. The internet is no helper. By the time you read some articulatedly, devilishly designed articles on the internet, it left you bewildered and then left to thinking nonsense and probably comment. Now so, hey, yeah, now, now so if you... All these churches, so now, wow, now, pastor, so because you have read one articulatedly, devilishly designed article, <laughs> and people are touching 
the Holy One of Israel, the Holy One of the church, because they've lost the fear of God. And they cry, we are all sons of God, as saved by grace, not by works. It is the gift of God. <laughs> Praise God. Daniel 5, 22. And the Bible said, in a certain time, in a certain kingdom, in the kingdom of Babylon, after Nebuchadnezzar the king have gone through, the Bible said he conquered several cities, including Israel, took some of them captive, and took some of the things, sacred things in the temple. But Nebuchadnezzar in his idol worship understood sacred things. And understood the fear of God. The Bible said he kept all those things in a place and kept it sacred. Nobody should touch them. The things they use for holy communion and several other things. But he came to this point, this boy who was foolish, who was foolish, they had a party. He told them, go and bring all those things. Go and bring all those things. Let's use and merry and enjoy and uh, fill our bellies. Want to drink with gold cups. Doesn't matter. It's cup. Cup is cup. Forget about that. Forget that thing. Cup is cup. <laughs> and while they were a merry, the Bible said, a hand from heaven wrote on the wall. Wrote what no man can read. You know, it was Daniel that told us that it was Mene Mene Teke Opasi. What the hand wrote, no man could read it. It was tongues. It was the hand of God. It was not, it was not the hand of any language. What was written, no man could read it. It was Daniel that by the Spirit came to decipher what was written. And he said, and thou, his son, O Belshazzar, has not humbled thy heart, though thou knewest all this. You see, the reason why, the fundamental thing, why people lose the fear of God, is pride. <laughs> pride. Look at some young men and their attitude when the word of God is coming. From there, I'm not saying of other things, from there, that's when I know how proud you are. You come and say, hey, good morning, sir. Hello, sir. Morning, sir. Father, sir. Heavenly Father, sir. But I know you reek of pride. You reek of pride. He said, and thou his, has no humble that Even though you knew, you, you knew, you knew. You knew. On Friday, we saw people have eyes, but can't see. There is something else that is behind it. You knew. 23. But has lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives, and thy concubines have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. And the God in whose thy breath is and whose are all thy ways has thou not glorified. So you praise the God of silver and God of good as if there were God of gold and God of silver. Say so these things don't see, they don't hear, they don't know anything. But the God who has their your bread, if you say chicken, you know how a man dies is that you breathe in and don't breathe out. Do you know? They, they take a last breath. That one, the carbon dioxide oil will refuse to come out. If he can come out, he will come back. That's why most times when they want to come back, they say, ah, yeah. that's why. Go and verify. Doctor, am I saying it? You don't even know this one. <laughs> they take the last breath. He said, the God who the bread in your nostrils is in his hands. 
you don't give him glory. Let's read the next verse very fast. 24. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, that God who you neglected and did not fear. And this writing was written, 25. And this is the writing that was written. He is not telling them the writing that was written. He said, this is tongues. Mene, mene, take care of us. 26. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene, God had numbered thy kingdom and finished it. 27, very fast. Take care, thou art weighed in the balances and have found one thing. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes. Patience. You read 29. Let's read. The king commanded that he be lifted and made the third ruler. 2030. 30. In that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain and the Medes and patience took over. Somebody say, fear the Lord. The spirit of the fear of God. It is enshrined in those spirits. When divine wisdom is upon you, it will teach you the fear of God. When you are, when you are so good academically, and I see the way you disregard, ah, I was studying. And then what do you think is ungodliness? What do you call ungodliness? You know, somebody can be a Christian and yet very ungodly. That's why the Bible says, having a form of godliness but denying the power of their own. But what do you think? I want to ask one or two persons. What do you think is ungodliness? Confidence. Answer now is when you use needle and uh, choke somebody. <laughs> uh, you say something. You don't know. I did not call your name. Why are you laughing? Ungodliness is not when you commit fornication. Ungodliness is not when you lie. Ungodliness is not when you say shege waka banga sara tama kura waka. Ungodliness is disregarding God when you don't regard God. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. If you regard him, you won't commit fornication. Because you know in that room he's with you. If you regard him, you won't be lying. Because you know he's not a liar. If you regard him, all these other things will not be a problem. It's ungodliness that brings sin, that makes people to sin. And it's because they don't have the fear of God. Are you blessed this morning? Rise to your feet.